Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. And uh, today, we're gonna be talking about why your tattoo's all raised, especially the line work. All right. Okay, now that that's over with, why is my tattoo raised? Why is it when I run my hand over my tattoo I can feel variations in my skin? Especially over the line work. Well, I hate to tell you, but normally this occurs because of scarring. And sad face. Um, since the invention of uh, these, these pen style machines and and I'm not saying it to everyone, it could be just a lack of apprenticeship, it could be a lack of understanding of the things they're working with, or even just the reason why we tell people that, you know, you're, you're a canvas and this is my art, which is extremely dehumanizing and something I do not agree with at all. Um, we're going to see a lot of scarring because, one, most people don't know how to tattoo lines effectively, and we've got a ton of videos about this um, on the, I don't know, whatever this thing is. And uh, <laughs> so, we're gonna see, usually what's gonna happen is we have our skin, right? Somebody is running lines and those are backwards. Um, what occurs is as that needle is coming in and they're trying to get very strong concentrations of pigment to have these one pass lines that they talk about, right? The amount of times the needle is having to hit the skin ends up chewing it up to a point that structurally it has been destroyed past recognition. It's like a nuke going off. And when the body goes to repair it, it's created a whole bunch of different, you know, scaffolding coming around. It fills it in and then the end result is actually a change because there's, there's just a huge quantity of scarred tissue in and around where that pigment is. Uh, past mechanical you know, uh, mistakes where people have oversaturated the area, this can also occur, right? If you have too much pigment crammed into a space, your body can't really handle it, it ends up kind of building something around it to try and keep it all in. It's like overstuffing a plastic garbage bag, right? gets really, really, really full. It's, you're, in like, you're in the shop, you're like, oh, I can get another tattoo out of this, try to pull it, you're like, God damn, it's just stuck in there. <laughs> well, it's just because there's too much in there, right? And this will cause a variation where the actual skin looks like it's gonna be pumped up. On average, we'll see something like this with um, something that the body is reacting to, so like whites especially, yellows, things like that. You'll see this bumping occur, and that's because the body's immune system has actually started to shove a bunch of extra cells into that area, trying to hold that pigment in place because it likes to move, and that in turn ends up creating a raised effect. The body is inflamed in that spot and it stays like that for usually three to six months. Three to six months. I might be talking a bit fast today. Um, I apologize. <laughs> but the other space is more and often I see this, this is always gonna come down just to scarring. People are running the needle usually too fast and they're moving their hand too slow. And what we used to call it was hamburger. Right, you've hamburgered the skin. So a few tips for you, right? One, if you see blood, stop. Now this is just for standard skin that has not been, we'll say sunbaked for you know a few days that people have been drinking, et cetera, et cetera. If you see blood, what's happened is you've gone too far in the skin, right? Your skin diagram like this. The vascularization is gonna be in the bottom half of the dermis. So if your needle is going down and creating trauma in that area or below it, you'll start to see blood seeping up into this. Now, blood is much different than exudates, right? That ambery gold color stuff that we'll see pop up uh, or even just liquid that's gonna come up, looks like it's sweating. That's totally fine, but blood, like real blood that is not mixed with anything, that means that the skin is traumatized a bit too much and you need to stop with what you're doing, right? Next thing, if you are using a pen style machine, all right, let's do this tip. Uh, slow your machine down. Because these pen style and rotary style machines, they're like doing tabori, right? Where you're, you're hand poking and getting this stuff in the skin, that, 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 that. And when you're doing that, you never see 
Yeah, and the Grand Master just fucking moving as fast as he can. It's slow, methodical, and the points are going to be going in to deposit the pigment. A little bit of a roll in the wrist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so what happens is, like, if your machine is moving too fast, one, because these are straight drive machines, the needle goes, and it's not like a quill where it'll bounce off and, and like adjust based on the tension of the skin to come back. It constantly drives. What happens is if it's going down too far, you're actually gonna end up bending the skin around the needle. And if the needle's coming back and down fast again, the skin is still gonna be at that depressed angle and the needles aren't gonna be able to make full penetration. And that means you're gonna get topical insertion of the pigments, which is gonna make you have to slow down your machine more to try and get the actual saturation up, which is not good. <laughs> So just, just do this, slow it down a little bit, depending on the stall speed of your machine, get it right around the stall. And instead of having your machine perpendicular with the skin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip it back to a relatively steep angle, right? Boop, okay. Um, and then we're gonna move towards whatever line that we have. So if we have, if we're looking down at our, our tube here, boop, our vent there, right? Uh, and the needle is coming out this way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move our machine towards it. So we're gonna keep it relatively low. And we're gonna move it like this. If we come into a turn, we're gonna rotate our machine with it to come around the turn. And if we're gonna be going around something, we'll also roll and rotate the machine as it goes. So you're gonna be using a lot of dexterous movement to try and make sure that that is gonna be moving the correct way. And if you keep a relatively straight one like this, instead of pulling backwards, right? which people pull backwards because they're running their machine too fast. And what's happening is, like I said before, that skin is staying stretched out and at the needle, it just keeps poking it. So as they start moving backwards, it's allowing the skin's elasticity to come back up and start meeting with the needle when it comes down, which allows for better implantation of the pigment, right? That's why they start pulling backwards. If you're pulling backwards, it's fine, you can do it, but it's gonna be a little bit less efficient and it can increase the amount of trauma that you're gonna see, which is going to create more scarring, which will make it raised. So if you've always pulled your lines, it's gonna take some practice to do this. And I'd say, I recommend trying it on yourself. If you've got your knee, top of your thigh, you've got like the inside of your calf, something like that, where you can go practice your stretch, make sure you have a good stretch and roll your lines the way that they're supposed to be done. And it'll decrease the chances of you getting that scarring, right? Uh, last time that we're gonna, or last thing we'll discuss when we're thinking about this uh, is going to be, I'm gonna use black for this one. Three, bad aftercare. So I'm not saying that you have bad aftercare. There is a result of some type of care after the tattoo has been done that has created a space where the tattoo has become scarred and it is now raised, right? Past the pigment allergy, which we'll do a video on that one specifically. Um, bad aftercare can be, you've done extremely wet healing and the skin is just not happy, it's over, produced a ton of cells, it's pushed out a bunch of pigment, it could never properly close because it's been too wet, it makes a big scab and then you end up with a scarred piece of garbage, right? The other one can be maybe you didn't take care of it enough, it dried out a whole bunch, got cracked, split, there's a deep wound that goes in, it takes forever for your body to heal, you get it raised up as well. Or it could just be maybe your client, you know, they have a bit of an itch, they don't know how to take care of the itch, right? Hot compress cold packs, uh, I think we have a video about that too. Um, and in their sleep, they're itching the hell out of it. That could cause it to be scarred or raised. Or maybe they'll let their dog lick it because they think that dog saliva is good for aftercare. That's bad aftercare. So that is that. If you're seeing your tattoos coming out and they look like they're raised and it's only your line work, it's probably because you're trying to do single pass stuff. So take your time, right? Back off, slow down your machine, tip it back a little bit, push with the lead, make sure your stretch is good and it should improve the quality of your line work. If you're not getting single pass, that's fine. Sometimes people's skin does not take, it doesn't take it. It won't work. Sometimes you have to sculpt lines. If you try to force it, you're gonna increase the chances of it becoming scarred. So take a look at each person's skin and as you're going, and everyone, if you're watching this and you've tattooed a bunch, you know, you just get like those marshmallow, the pillow skin people, it's almost impossible to lay a line. You get the other ones where you're running it, it's super dry and the skin splits. I mean, there could be so many things that are gonna happen that are gonna influence that, that single pass stuff that you get that, that you need to just take it with a grain of salt and adapt on the fly. Anyways, that's that. If you like this, subscribe, do all that stuff, hit the bell, I don't know. Or uh, go check out our, our, our our, our swag shop. That's always fun. You can support the show that way. Uh, buy me a coffee, check out our podcast, and that's it. Anyways, 
I gotta go shopping. So I hope you guys have a great day. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.